Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the 5 Rounds Podcast, the only podcast out there with the cardio for those deep water championship rounds. I am Mags and I've just finished watching UFC Fight Night 200, uh, UFC Vegas 47, headlined uh, by the middleweight clash between Sean Strickland and Jack Hermanson. Uh, but before we get to the sixth fight main card, let's quickly run through these prelims. Uh, we started the night with a, a first round knockout by Malcolm Gordon on Dennis Bondar in the flyweight division. Then we moved up to welterweight where Philip Rowe got the second round KO of Jason Witt. Um, going up to the light heavyweight division and Jailton Almeida got the first round knockout of Danilo Marquez. Bad result there for Mr Ray Cash. Uh, going into the women's bantamweight, the only women's fight on this card was uh, won by Alexis Davis uh, by a uh, split decision. Then uh, middleweight, uh, Chide uh, Giacane, um, brother, younger brother of Anthony uh, Giacane, the UFC veteran, um, got a 16 second knockout on his debut fight out over Mark andre Barrio. Uh, that is actually now the second fastest knockout in UFC history uh, for somebody making their debut. Uh, Todd Duffy holding the record still with uh, seven seconds, I believe. Uh, then we drop back down to the featherweight division with Hakeem Duwadu getting the decision against Mark Trezano. And then we finish the prelims with uh, Miles Johns uh, losing uh, via submission in the third round to John Castanada. Um, going on to the main card, and we started the night with uh, Julian Rosa taking on Stephen Peterson. Both of these two wily, wily veterans in the featherweight division. Both with two very different kind of fighting styles. Peterson uh, tends to uh, enjoy working uh, his ground game, uh, whereas uh, Julian Arosa is clearly um, way more adept at that stand-up, uh, that kicking and, and certainly that punching game. Someone who likes to keep his arms very, very low, uh, got lightning fast reaction speed with his uh, with his shots. And they came into into show all the way through this fight. Uh, start off a little bit nervous with uh, Peterson. Um, looking for the clinches and the takedowns when Rosa looking to defend and control the centre of the cage. Um, we land some nice body kicks and then uh, Rosa follows them up with uh, some, some nice jabs. Um, Peterson landed um, an inside leg kick, started kind of getting a lot of success with uh, those tapping little, uh, little leg kicks, uh, but... Uh, once Erosa started to, to turn up the volume on on the shots, he did uh, started to do a lot of damage to to Peter and cut his uh, his eye uh, pretty early in the in the fight. Was able to uh, um, to add to that later on in the fight when uh, essentially Peterson was bleeding from uh, his nose under his eye and I think a cut on the side of his face or maybe even under the chin he was uh, he was cut up pretty badly by by Erosa all the way through this fight uh going through the the second round I think he had a um he had a better round uh Peterson uh, uh, got a, a lot more uh, success with uh, with his uh, with his shots. He was able to stuff uh, Erosa's takedowns, and he actually uh, Peter actually wobbled um, Erosa with a big overhand right, uh, charged him with a flurry of, um, of shots, looking for the finish. Uh, but the Erosa kind of like was almost knocked out to be walking back up by some of the shots and, and survived essentially by the, the skin of his teeth. But one thing about Julian Arosa is that he never stops coming. Um, he's all, he's got one kind of attitude and that's to always bring the fight to, uh, to his opponent and that's how he kind of uh, worked his way out of trouble to uh, to finish the, the round with a, a, a really decent front kick. Uh, but that meant it was all to play for for this uh, for this fight, uh, and it, uh, Julian was able to just dial it up that little bit more to uh, to earn the split decision, landing some more cleaner shots. Um, Peterson um, was was able to kind of uh, 
uh, transitioned some of uh, Erosa's takedowns into uh, guillotine attempts, uh, but because of the blood and because of the sweat and the fact it was the third round, uh, they were able to to lock into Tyler. Um, and you could have you could have easily seen the judges give this uh, third round to Peterson um, because he did have a lot of control, but it was off his back, uh, and um, he when Erosa did uh, manage to kind of separate, and when he did manage to uh, to um, uh, pull away from 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 Peterson, uh, he could score the takedown pretty quickly uh, again he was able to land uh, some some big shots of his own um, there was a point where Peterson did land a, a decent kick that uh, that kind of caused Erosa to, to stumble uh, and, and uh, whiff on a big shot but uh, I think Erosa did just enough to maybe win this fight the, uh, the, the takedowns were probably the thing that edged it over over um over Pearson but this was a um a great fight by both really one that I would implore people to go back and watch. Um yeah, this was early February and we're looking at a potential fight of the year contender already. Um the one kind of uh fly in the ointment I suppose was the fact that Stephen Peterson uh did miss weight, missed it by about four pounds I think uh all told uh but that that does mean that um if it did get uh bonuses uh he would have to give uh twenty percent of that bonus to uh Julian Arosa for for that fight but yeah great fight nonetheless and uh, a great victory for Julian Arosa. So next we jump up to the middleweight division uh, for the first of three middleweight fights on this main card. Uh, Chiz- Chizan Go um, and Brian uh, Battle. Now these are two names that you may remember from Ultimate Fighter 29. Uh, Brian Battle, the eventual winner of that Ultimate Fighter, but Trezan Go uh, got to the final, uh, but unfortunately had to uh, had to relinquish his spot due to injury. Um, Brian Battle had um, a chip on his shoulder all the way through that uh, that recording of the Ultimate Fighter because he was uh, one of the last uh, people picked. I think he was the last person picked for Team Volkanovska, and he always had that mentality that. Um, that the the coaches should should do their research, and there was a lot of uh, bad blood going into the into this. Um, Trezan certainly felt that he was the a worthy winner of, of the Ultimate Fighter, and uh, he had a massive massive issue with Brian Battle winning and calling himself the Ultimate Fighter. Um, so there was a lot of uh, animosity, uh, especially coming from from uh, from Gore. Uh, battle um, who has looked really kind of it looked really impressive in his uh, in his outings in the, in the UFC, uh, but this was certainly going to be a, a big big test for him. Uh, Trezan Gore is uh, he's like a tank, but hits like a freight train. Um, but Brian Battle, he's no slouch himself. So when we get to the fight, um, uh, Trezan starts to control the the center of the octon really kind of stalking really kind of uh tight, tightly wound up looking for that one big hit and let's make no bones about this it would only take one uh huge hit from Trezan go uh for for this fight to be over uh so uh, brain had to be on point for every second of this fight because one uh, drop of your guard one slip up and this is a this is a a nat nat Uh, and props to brain battle he's he's spent a lot of time uh, dodging and weaving landing those uh, those push kicks um, landing the 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 leg kicks really kind of frustrating um, Trezango um he he was also able to to land a decent uh, two three combination uh, to the side of the head, follow up by the jab, uh, which um, which it looked like it didn't do much in terms of damage, but certainly uh, added to the frustration that that uh, Trezan Gore was showing. Um, he in the in the first round. 
Um, he only really landed one decent shot, which uh, which made uh, Brian's mouth guard come out. A lot of uh, a lot of um, arguing and backbiting about that between the two fighters, which um, got a little bit testing, a little bit uh, childish. Uh, but it was a warning to to Brian that this this fight could end any moment. Um, so going into the second, um, he continued with the the kind of push kicks, keeping uh, go at range, uh, tapping him with with uh, with jabs and um, and and the the, the long rangey uh, uh, kicks. But Go was a little bit more active in in this. Uh, in this second round, uh, landed a really big uh, body kick, uh, buckled his legs with a with a big left hand. Then we see uh, um, in, in Brian Battle lose the mouthpiece again, which uh, causes another pause in the action. Um, that kind of give Brian the the impetus to to kind of reset, uh, but. It wasn't enough. Gore was able to to land some some more big shots, almost uh, getting the 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 knockdown. Uh, but uh, Brian is able to to gather himself, gets back into the centre of the cage, goes for the takedown, uh, which is stuffed by by uh, Trejan Gore. But but uh, Brian uh, lands a knee, uh, goes for another takedown. Uh, we see a tar clinch, uh, some big knees from from Gore. Uh, but we uh, get back to 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 battle in control. He gets the single leg takedown attempt, which is defended. Uh, we see a bit of a, an attempt of a guillotine by by uh, Gore. Uh, he ends up with with top position. Um, a much better round for for Gorn, and uh, coming up to the end, you could see that um, the damage had really been done uh, for the for the few shots that uh, that Trezan Gore had landed on Brian Battle, the 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 pain uh, and the the cuts over the eye uh, were huge to the point where. Um, it looked like Brian Battle couldn't see out of that eye. It was uh, it was so so swollen, uh, but he continued that that uh, that same game plan that had worked for uh, the full first round and, and a lot of the second round, uh, where he was uh, controlling the pace with the with the uh, push kicks, landing a few more uh, of those um, of those rangy jabs. Um, but Gore um, did. He returned to what he did in the first round, which was the 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 the, the stalking of Brian uh, Battle, the the keeping tight and ready to 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 unload. Uh, we see uh, Battle go for a kick, uh, but Gore is able to time and, and push through it and get the takedown. Uh, not doesn't keep uh, Battle on the floor uh, for for too long. We get into the clinch and a little bit of jockeying. Uh, go land some big punches on on the exit, uh, and this is where we kind of like see a little bit of a change because we now see uh, Brian Battle take uh, the centre of the octagon and really try and uh, push for for control. Uh, gets a clinch. We see some more um, more jostling for 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 position and some uh, strikes engaged. Uh, bat, uh, battle again uh, when when they break away instantly back to the clinch. Uh, Gore is able to push away and land a, a big right hand. Um, Battle goes for, for the takedown, which is stuffed. Uh, we then see Battle uh, land a, a kick and some punches and then a big body kick uh, to, to finish the round. Uh, a, a quite a tight uh, third round, but I think uh, with with the, the way he dictated the action, with the way he dictated the clinches, uh, Brian Battle certainly deserved to come out of this uh, uh, as the winner. Um, Gore, incredibly upset about it, walked out of the octagon pretty much straight away. Uh, and yeah, it's a, a brilliant victory for, for Brian Battle. Keeps his uh, UFC run uh, unbeaten. Um, Gore, uh, where he, essentially his first non-exhibition fight in the UFC, ends in, uh, in failure. But I'm sure we'll see a, a lot more of him. He's, uh, he certainly um, has a lot of potential. So... 
third part on the card, um, we uh, go up uh, upper division. Smiling Sam Alvey um, take, um, taking on Brendan Allen in the light heavyweight division. I think Brendan Allen had only actually taken this fight um, maybe um, a, a week or so uh, ago. Uh, Smiling Sam, obviously, uh, one of the most beloved fighters in the UFC, always kind of happy and merry. But uh, Brendan Allen looking to really kind of cement himself as uh, a potential challenger in in this division uh and with this uh with this fight he certainly has uh, has put his name in the mix uh he, he brendan starts the the fight as as the aggressor taking control of the the center of the cage and we see uh sam alva kind of uh laterally moving around the outside uh brendan uh lands a uh, a nice combination of punches uh but that's uh countered well by by alva who lands um, a hard right uh right down the middle uh sends uh Brendan Allen uh, backing out for a moment, uh, goes for, but that uh, leads him into a takedown, um, stuffed well by by Sam Alva. Um, then we see um, Allen try for a, a head kick, which uh, just whiffs. Sam Alva then uh, fans uh, fans Allen's chin again with that with that right, starts to really kind of uh, uh, get a lot of uh, success with that. We see Brendan Allen trying to uh, close the distance and keep that uh, the fight uh, tight and uh, in in the in the kind of form box area. Uh, we see Brendan Allen go for a um, a spin kick which misses, uh, but Sam is unable to capitalise. His his uh, responding punch uh, goes a little bit awry, uh, but he does follow up with a, a nice kind of little uh, one two three combination. Uh, we see a bit of clinching up against the fence uh, when um, Brendan Allen is able to control, uh, pull away, and then get the the shot off at the end. And just after we we see see that uh, clinching breakaway, we see um, Brendan Allen land a beautiful uh, right on Sam Alvey, which uh, uh, pushes. Um, uh, Sam back and if it wasn't for the cage I think we would have seen a, a knockdown um, then uh, Alan smelling that smelling that uh, opportunity uh, closes in uh, Sam's able to, to force it into a clinch and we end that first round with uh, Brendan Allen um, seemingly on top uh, comes out for the second, lands a, a, a decent uh, kick on on Alva. Uh, Alva's um, keeps peppering away with that right jab to to keep uh, Brendan Allen at bay. Uh, we get back to the centre of the octagon and we see Sam Alva charging forward with uh, with some shots, uh, easily avoided though by Brendan Allen. Uh, then he lands a shot to the body, uh, hard left, uh, which absolutely drops uh, Sam Alva. Uh, a little bit of a tap tap um, to give uh, Sam something to think about, uh, which opens up the opportunity for for Brendan Allen to uh, jump on the on the back, get the rear naked choke. Sam Alva, uh, in a world of trouble, uh, quickly gets the 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 tap. Um, Brendan Allen picks up a, a, a victory, takes the fight on late notice, and and really kind of uh, cements himself as a as uh, a name to be reckoned with in this division. So next up, we drop down to 170 pounds, the welterweight division, uh, to see Carlson Harris uh, looking to uh, make a huge statement by beating somebody um, with a lot of heart behind them, the the unbeaten uh, Shevkat Rak- Rakmanov, um, 15 and 0 in his career. But um, has been unbeaten as well in his uh, his two UFC outings. First, he beat Alex Cowboy uh, Oliveira, uh, and then he beat Michelle uh, Prezeres, um in the middle of last year. So he's looking to continue making that statement and really kind of push um, for for uh, climbing those welterweight ranks. Uh, again, coming up against a very dangerous fighter in, in Carlson Harris, um, certainly someone who could hold their own. Um, but unfortunately, Carlton was no match for uh, Carlson was no match at all for uh, Shavkat. 
Um, we start off uh, with with uh, Rachmanov taking the control of the the centre of the octagon. Uh, we see ha- uh, Harris offering uh, a few porky jabs, uh, but Rachmanov is able to to uh, avoid pretty easily. Uh, Harris follows up with a, a body shot, and Rachmanov. Um, answers back with a quick jab lands a spin kick to the body uh, then follows that up with uh, a flurry of punches and then a clinch um, Rachmanov is looking to take the fight to the mat uh, unfortunately for, for him Harris is able to, to uh, keep the fight standing and, and, and start the clinch against the against the cage um, and it looked like that um, that Harris was was pretty comfortable landing some foot stomps. Uh, Rak- Rakmanov tried to uh, pick him up and um, to really kind of rubber stamp the the um, the control and the diversity of, uh, of of Harris. He was able to not only avoid getting slammed, uh, but avoid um, even getting took off his feet because uh, his uh, his balance whilst being lifted. By Rekmanov was was absolutely sublime, but unfortunately, when it happened uh, the second time, uh, he wasn't able to to control it as much as he is. Uh, he's essentially hip tossed to the floor. Um, doesn't stay on the ground uh, for too long, and uh, Harris is able to get back, and uh, they then split and start doing some uh, some. Uh, tit for tat strikes, landing uh, jabs and um, punches down the middle. Uh, Rachmanov lands a beautiful spinning hook kick that uh, sends Harris uh, down to the floor. Follows it up with uh, with some punches, uh, and then Harris is put out absolutely asleep with a, a right hand uh, bomb to the face. Um, so yeah, Rachmanov comes out of this uh, three and zero in, in the UFC. Three finishes uh, in in his three UFC fights, and really kind of making a name for himself. Um, it, very much in the um, the Hamzat Chimia vein. Uh, so in this welterweight division, there's certainly a lot of young hungry contenders for uh, for the likes of uh, Kamara Usman to be um, keeping an eye over his shoulder uh, on. But yeah, great victory for for Shavkat Rachmanov. Um, unfortunate for for Carlson Harris, but you live and you learn, and I'm sure he will be back and and better than ever. So for the co main event, we have our second of three middleweight fights. This time, uh, we see uh, Nick Nick Maximov taking on uh, Puna Hele Soriano, uh, and this was a. Uh, as close a, a, a fight that you will see um, pretty much anywhere in in, in uh, the UFC, really, really razor thin um, decisions by by the judges. Um, I saw um, some some very respected UFC uh, journalists uh, on on Twitter whilst I, I was watching this fight give um, totally different. Um, viewpoints and different results one uh, giving um, uh, Soriano t- the first two rounds another one giving uh, Maximoff the first two rounds and then another one uh, with it split down the middle so yeah it was a, a very very tight fight to call uh, from my point of view um, I think that uh, Nick Maximoff did enough to uh, to win this fight and there's um, there's not really a lot of point in breaking this down round for round because it was uh, um, it was very similar all the way through um, through the whole of this fight. Um, Maximov was looking to control with with his elite level wrestling, and I'm talking elite level, kind of a uh, um, almost Dagestani level of of, of wrestling. Um, Soriano was frustrated for long periods of this fight. Now the argument can be made that that if you don't do anything with the the control that you have, and we're talking maybe ten minutes plus of control in the fifteen round uh, fifteen minute fight. Um, that that should actually be judged against you. Uh, and when Soriano did uh, have um, success uh, in the in the stand up, he did a lot of damage. In the midway of the the first round, for example, uh, Soriano lands a, a big knee that that opens up a, a cut. 
but the issue is that there was so much uh, wrestling game from Maximoff and so much uh, wrestling diversity that it's hard it's hard for me uh, to to not give him this far. Um, we've seen that in the first round, he spends a hell of a lot of time uh, backpacking on on top of uh, Soriano, uh, and he's, Soriano's having to lean against the cage with his head to kind of take a lot of that that pressure off his off his legs. Um, Soriano's uh, wrestling defense was was incredibly good to to survive the uh, the the time that he was pressurized by by Maximoff. Uh, and it's it was seemingly that Maximoff was able to to take him down with relative ease. Um, and every time that Soriano was almost getting back to his feet, uh, Maximoff fired in and and ankle picked or he uh, he was able to switch around and, and take the back very uh diverse uh wrestling um acumen by by Nick Maximoff. Um, it almost came a cropper at the the coming into the end of the third round when um, after spending quite a lot of time in control, Soriano was able to uh, force Nick's head and shoulders underneath the uh, Soriano's own groin, so he was essentially sat on the on the the top of the back of 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 uh, Nick Maximoff, and when Maximoff uh, tried to um, to pull out of, of that position he and 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 ankle picked the leg again he took a lot of big big shots to the to the the face and to the and to the the side of the head um but the the wrestling was just absolutely super by by Maximoff. I know a lot of MMA fans and um, combat sport fans in general aren't particularly fans of of, of the wrestling. Uh, they want to see the blood and the gore and the and the spectacular knockouts and and submissions. But for me, the the technical aspect of the wrestling, the technical skill that is involved in controlling an opponent on the ground and making them um, look inept, making them look ordinary is is a sight to behold. And uh, for me, I think uh, Nick Maximoff fully deserved uh, this victory. Uh, and it was a real kind of um, showcase of wrestling from, um, from somebody who's uh, trained... Uh, trained underneath uh, the Diaz brothers who trained underneath uh, 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 the team Gracie so you're really seeing that those legacy of of technical skill really filtering down uh, this keeps uh, Maximoff unbeaten in the UFC to a second fight a second win also unbeaten in MMA in general with a 8 and all um, certainly has a lot of work to do in terms of um, uh, stand-up game and defending uh, shots because he he did eat a lot of shots uh, from Soriano in in the time that he was on the ground, but uh, certainly a hell of a lot to to build off and a great victory for him. So going into the main event and two fighters looking to really push themselves into the the top five of this middleweight division. Uh, Sean Strickland on an absolute tear in in recent months, really kind of come out as not only as a, a, a top draw fighter but a top draw character as well. Uh, we've we've all seen the the UFC clips of him being uh, angry with his uh, with his training partners, uh, accusing the partners of of uh, wanting to intentionally hurt him. We've also seen the uh, the clips of him living pretty much like a hobo, I suppose, with a, a, a toilet that doesn't flush and, and doors without handles on and things like that. Um, and that's totally kind of a, the opposite end of the spectrum of, of Jack Hermanson, who, um, who really goes in for the art of, uh, of MMA, really kind of um all about the the grappling uh, and the takedowns and the and the control where Strickland is all about landing those jabs and 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 knocking people out uh and this is another fact that that goes to decision but yeah is another fact that um is 
it's so enjoyable to watch. Uh, and again, kind of like the 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 Coleman event with uh, Maximoff and, and Soriano, all the the rounds kind of blend into one. Um, really, the the same game plan uh, from both fighters uh, all the all the the way through. Um, Hermanson does does in the first round um, does stick to that that takedown uh, heavy game, uh, but um, unfortunately for for him, Strickland is just peppering that 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 jab uh, all the way through through the fight. Uh, whenever Hermanson tries anything um, to to break the monotony of this fight, like body kicks. Um, uh, or even throwing in uh, his his own uh, headshots, it's just it's just totally negated by by Strickland's head movement uh, and the way he just fires that jab all the way through. Uh, not really a lot of a uh, uh, mixing uh, around in terms of striking from from Strickland, but he didn't need to. He was just that jab uh, and the follow up was was just so so dominant. Um, and as the fight um, went on, he got more and more confident in stuffing Hermanson's takedowns. He got more and more confident that Hermanson's shots were uh, easy to avoid. Uh, I think the the end total was he uh, Strickland had almost three times the amount of shots uh, thrown as uh, as Hermanson uh, did, but. Uh, Landed six times the amount that Hermanson did. Hermanson's uh, uh, headshot record was was one of the worst I've seen in in UFC uh, in a long, long time. Landing less than twelve percent of it, of the shots he threw, uh, and that's just testament to how good Strickland's evasion techniques were. He just it was almost like bullet time matrix style. The way he was able to just avoid the shots from. Uh, from Jack Hermanson, but yet his landed 50, 60% of the time. Uh, and really, none of them did superb amounts of damage, but the, there's always a bit of sting on a, on a Sean Strickland jab. And then when he follows it up with the, with the right hand afterwards, uh, and yeah, all the way through uh, rounds two, three, and four, it was it was just that amount of output that Strickland uh, was putting that was working time and time again um, and the fact that he was able to avoid everything that, that Hermanson was 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 throwing at him um, when it comes to takedowns he was good at uh, stuffing them when Hermanson tried to mix it up with leg kicks uh, Strickland was able to, to counter and, and, and catch them when uh, Hermanson going into um, the the fourth round uh, was looking to really change up his uh, his game, Strickland was just one step ahead every single time, and even at the the very end of the the fourth round, when uh, when Hermanson landed a shot that that um, started a trickle of blood coming out of the nose of uh, Sean Strickland, it still wasn't really enough that you could you could give him in good conscience uh the the round uh going into into the fifth round and Hermanson had it all to do he needed the finish and he started to to really kind of turn up the pressure did land a, a really good superman punch uh but Strickland just followed up with more of those left jabs that just kept uh Hermanson at bay uh even in this round where Hermanson was trying to pressure us um uh, a, a lot more than he did all the way through the the, the first four rounds, uh, but um, but Strickland's dodging and his defense was just such on such on point that it was hard for Hermanson to to actually land anything really significant. Uh, we see um, Strickland mixing up a little bit in this round, throwing some uh, outside leg kicks. Uh, Hermanson, with a minute to go, goes for the takedown, which again is stuffed. I think he's, he was uh, he went 0-9 uh, in terms of takedowns all the way through the, uh, through the fight, which just shows how dominant uh, Sean Strickland was in terms of wrestling defence, in terms of striking, in terms of striking defence. It was just a very, very... 
professional display by Sean Strickland, someone who's been knocking on the, the door of the top five for quite a while now. Uh, and with this result, he's not only knocking on the door, he's kicked the door down and he's got to be in consideration uh, to take on the winner of uh, Adesanya and uh, Robert Whittaker in, in, in the upcoming weeks. It's uh, a huge, huge performance uh, from from uh, Sean Strickland um, to be a very, very classy uh, Jack Hermanson, someone who has been so close to uh, to uh, title shots uh, in in the past. I'm sure he'll still be up there again, but yeah, Sean Strickland really kind of blossoming over the last year or so and definitely looking like he's a, he's a future uh, title contender. So, yeah, that's pretty much um, UFC uh, Fight Night 200 Vegas 47 in the bag. Uh, we'll be back next week uh, with that uh, middleweight title match uh, between Israel Adesanya and Robert Whittaker. Um, the rematch, uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of bad blood between those two. Then we've also got the, the co-main event of Derek Lewis and Tatu Vassa. Uh, we've got uh, Jared Cannonier and Derek Brunson. Uh, Bobby Reed and, and Nazrat Hakparast as well on the card. So yeah, it's a, a very, very stacked card. So uh, tune in next week for uh, the fallout from UFC 271. But that is all from me. Um, so like I said, I am Mags. You can follow me on Twitter at Podfather Mags. Uh, you can follow Carlos uh, at Kirby underscore Carlos. Follow this show at Five Rounds Pod. Uh, definitely go and check out some of the, the other amazing content from the, the networks that we are proudly proudly affiliated with so that's the chair shop media group that is visionaries global media and of course that is here on radio techers uh thank you all for listening and that is the end he's hurt he hurt a big time he's trying to finish